Hey, you team money gang, welcome back to the channel. How to become a freelance book editor or a proofreader. If this is the kind of video you want to hear, then don't go anywhere. Like this video right now and keep watching. Because right here, this year, is one of those starter times that people take on what they do, what the skill they've acquired. But beyond that, look at something that they have always, always looked down on or not considered. A lot of people who are natural error spotters in written scripts look down on the skill or look down on the talent and usually know that there is a reason why I know I read a lot and I read voraciously and I see errors and mistakes that other people don't see when they read. But the thing is, they have always wondered, can I make a living doing this? Will people want to pay me? And all of that. So if you want to start your book editing business as a freelancer, then I have 10 tips for you to start. When I started my freelance book editing business in 2009, it was, it was at the point I was at crossroads about what exactly to do with my finances. I had recently gotten a job in a media company editing for a magazine company, but the truth was the finance was not coming. Salaries were not even being paid for four months four whole months. I told myself, girl, you can do this thing. You have always done it even in university and everywhere. So why can't you reach out as a freelancer and let people know that you do this? So I'm telling you from the wealth of experience that I have acquired that you can do the same, especially if you are unsure how exactly to put your price in and all of that. I also have a course right here in the description box that you can click at and take to teach you everything I know in the last 13 years, all in, in an eight weeks course to get you started. But now, how do you start as a freelancer? First of all, be sure to recognize that you are a natural when it comes to spotting errors in written scripts. If you come to the point where you have accepted that this is my talent, this is my skill, then that's the first place to start. The next thing is to understand that in the publishing industry or in the writing industry in general, editing is not a uniform skill. It's diversified, okay? So there's developmental editing, which has to do with the macro aspect of the work, looking at the overview, the storyline, the plot, the um, description of char characters and all of those things. When you are sure that the ideas align and that there are, there's nothing that will incriminate the writer, then you could, you know, be looking at um, if that is the easier part, then you should be telling yourself as a developmental editor. Now, that's the first level. The second level is the copy editor. A copy editor is the grammar girl, is the grammar man, is the person who makes sure that every sentence construction, concord, verb and um, verb agreement and all of that align. As well as, okay, yeah, yeah, words and new words, use of words, you know, making sure that sentences are not passive, that they are active in a way that it keeps someone interested in reading the whole book, right? So if you're that kind of person who spots this level of error, then you're a copy editor. The third level is a proofreader, the person that makes sure that all the T's and I's are crossed and all the spellings are on point. That person is so important and sometimes your job as a proofreader goes double ways. After a developmental editing and copy editing has been done and then after the book has been designed and, and, and put in layout design, so just make sure that before you run the print, that everything is in place. So the work of the proofreader is so super exciting and important, just like the first two. Okay, so if you're able to find your place within these three levels, then that's good. Number three, you must find your niche, your writing niche. Now, not everybody can read a medical article or a medical book not everybody can decode legalese, legal, you know, jargons in the script. Not everybody even likes technology, a lot of technical jargons in the script. So you must find your niche, something that you're already used to reading, the flair that you already love. Like I myself, the, I have the same appetite for my interest in reading as well as in movies. I find myself a drama girl. I find myself a romantic, you know, person. So I go for romantic movies most of the time, and most of the times also, I really tilt towards drama, real life, 
um, expertise, you know, people, things that have to come with people and who they are. Yeah, so you see what I mean? So find the niche of writing that you totally love to read. That way, you'll also totally love to edit it. Yes. So look at, do you love fiction, non-fiction? Now, in fiction, what kind of fiction do you love? In non-fiction, what kind of non-fiction do you love? Do you love thrillers? Do you love, um, in fiction, do you like thrillers, sci-fi, um, um, horror, romance, you know, all the way, children's stories. In non-fiction, do you like biographies, memoirs, research papers, all of that, process documents and process books, industry expertise, what have you? So you have to be sure that this is the kind of, or this is the genre of books that I delight in reading, uh, so you can see whether you can specialize in it. Another video, you know, that you have to check out on this channel, the top paying writing niches to look out for. Now look out for that video also after this one, okay? Now the next thing that you need to do, the fourth thing that you need to do to start your freelance editing business, you have to be proactive. You have to plan ahead of time. You have to put your template, your work models. You have to fix your pricing, create a structure, decide how you would deal with clients from inquiry to delivery. Put all that in place so that you're not saying different things to different people at different times. That will guide you even when you employ somebody else so they know exactly what to do. Yeah. The next thing to do is to join an editorial hub more like a marketplace or a place to develop yourself in your skill. See, nobody knows it all. And if you're, if you're an editor in the English language, you know that English language is as dynamic as anything. And languages keep getting into the dictionary every new day. You know, different aspects of the world speak English in their different ways. And what might be incorrect for you might be correct for another person. And, oh, you know, you just have to keep learning to be a great editor. So joining a hub of editors or a marketplace that will help you learn and also market your skill, learn to market your skill, then is totally recommended. And if you want to join us, especially if you're an African editor, you can click the link below to join our WhatsApp community where we reach out and teach and share from our combined efforts. And you can never, never, never go wrong with that. Okay, the next thing to do to start off your freelance editing business on a good footing is get people's work to edit. Offer free or discounted services, editing services. See, the, the why you need to do that, especially if you have never edited for someone before, is that you need to have testimonials. You need to have people who say, oh yeah, he's my editor, she did my book, he did my book. So that you don't come off as somebody who have not been tested and tried. So go out there, look for editing job, use social media, use people around you, get somebody who is working on their book and totally knock them off with your editing skill. But of course, remember that you need to also do the one that is your expertise. So that way you shine through. You should also be able to let go if you assess this work and it's not, let's say you need the, the remainder editor, but you are a proofreader. You're able to let, to also advise the person to get the elementary editor's input and then the copy editor before coming to you. Yeah, so you must be able to get all that clear and not just take on your work and not be able to run through it. I always advise that it's risky to want to do the three levels of editing or two levels of editing by yourself. Sometimes you will even run out of time, so it's not advisable. To get to understand some of these intricacies and the tools of the trade, make sure to check out my link below chisom.seller.co slash editor school to get into our online course that exponentially change your income from this one skill that you have ignored for centuries. Next thing to do is to set your rates. Now, one thing that is a must say is that there are different ways to set your rates. So you can charge per hour, or you can charge per word, or you can charge per page. And please, if you're charging per page, industry standard is either 250 words or 300 words make a page. So you go ahead and decide your charges for either of these three levels. Okay. The next thing that you need to do to, to get this freelancing job in is to set up a marketing front. So decide on what platform or your website that you need to use to as your landing page for people to get to know your services the more so that you can create that no like trust factor for people make sure you have a content marketing plan in place where you use 
content and educational content to educate your prospective client into trusting you, knowing you, and, and liking you enough to give you their book to edit. You can also use any of the social media platform to begin to build authority and create a personal brand as a freelance book editor. And I'm giving you two more points and the last one will also blow your mind. So don't go anywhere. Okay. Have you liked this video yet? Please give it a thumbs up if you like it thus far and two more points to go. Okay. So you have set up your price now. The next thing you have to figure out is how people can pay you in installments. Don't mistake this. Don't start working on the manuscript where you have not been paid anything. So it is for you to check out what are the percentages that you need to be paid upfront and how much you need to be paid as a balance after the work is done. Usually I use 70%, 70, 30%. Yeah. So you must work out how people can pay you in installments first before you start and then afterwards. Very, very, very important. Clue. Make sure that how much you are paid upfront can almost like if per adventure, you don't get paid the remaining at the end, it will not bother you so much. If you know what I mean? That's why I use 70%. I have a friend who is 80%. So you decide. Okay. Okay. The final point is don't stop learning. No, you can't. You can't be a successful editor and you don't like to read anymore. You don't like to watch educational content anymore. You don't like to build your words anymore. You don't want to find out the new trends in the dictionary anymore. No way. You have to keep learning. And you see, in this case, you learn from everything, from everybody. You have to be open-minded to learn and learn. And these are so important, especially now because of the high rate of things, inflation, global recession and the rest. This is a time to double down on the things that come to you easily. Have you noticed how it is like, you know, fun and all vibes when you can totally monetize something that comes to you naturally, it's something you have been doing for free. If you are like me before I started, I had all already, I already had a about a decade of experience editing and proofreading people's books for free. It just gives me a certain level of fulfillment. Listening to me, you might just be, be like me, but this is one way to monetize it easily. I was able to monetize my own without having a company at the time, without having um, a laptop at the time even. I had to borrow to do the, the few jobs I got first, without having marketing material but my word of mouth, because it's something that already came to me naturally. So to be able to tell people about it was easy. Then when I got the jobs in, it was easy for me to also do them and deliver and get paid. Now, you know, this is about the money. If you live in a place like the United States or environs, the average salary for a book editor is around $50,000 annually. And um, so it can go between 48000 to about fifty two in most cases. If you live in Nigeria or in Africa where I'm from, the typical like industry average you find for if for proofreading, say a hundred page book, which is about 30,000 words, is said to be between 60,000 to 90,000. So even though you're going to get people who are, you know, higher or less, but that's typically what it is. So if you're somebody who is thinking, how do I put my rates? Use that to benchmark, right? So that's for proofreading. So you know that if it's going to, if you're going to be a copy editor, you need to charge a little bit more than proofreader, is the proofreader. If you're going to be a developmental editor, you're supposed to charge a little bit more than the copyright editor and the proofreader. So that helps you to set your price. Keep your eye on the goal, keep your eye on the goal, okay? So don't swear the small stuff. Make sure that you are comfortable where you are. Make sure you can clearly take a decision about your, your career line. I'm gonna get intimate into some of the techniques of making a living and making a lot of income from book editing. So make sure you check those videos out and until you come your way again, go think about it and figure out how to make millions millions every year from doing this whole skill. Yes.